Welcome to A History of Crime. In this series, we explore significant historical events that have influenced our perception of crime and justice. Our focus today is on that timeless enigma once again, the Jack the Ripper case. In the realm of suspicion, Francis Tumblety emerges as a noteworthy suspect. Known for his austatious demeanour, mysterious nature and contentious reputation, Tumblety's narrative intertwines reality and myth, and the question arises, could he have been the notorious Whitechapel murderer? Accompany us on a journey through Victorian London's dimly lit streets, as we piece together Francis Tumblety's life and scrutinise his potential link to the Whitechapel murders. We invite you to contribute your thoughts and theories in the comments. Was Tumblety merely a sensational figure entangled in a web of speculation or the real person behind the ghastly legacy of the Jack the Ripper case. Francis Tumblety's story begins in Ireland, where he was born. His family, including 10 siblings, emigrated to Rochester, New York shortly after his birth. And by 17, Tumblety was selling books, possibly of the controversial nature, along the Erie Canal, and briefly worked as a cleaner in a hospital. This was before he embarked on a journey that would see him leave home for a decade. Tumblety set himself up as a great doctor in Detroit, despite being commonly known as a quack. He sold patent medicines like Tumblety's Pimple Destroyer and Dr. Moore's Indian Root Pills. His medical approach, favouring herbal remedies over conventional treatments and his erratic military-style clothing, became his trademark. Tumblety's claims of success led him to wealth and notoriety, practicing in places like Canada, New York and Washington DC, even claiming to have met Abraham Lincoln. Despite his controversial medical practices, as said before, Tumblety amassed a considerable wealth, and by 1858, he returned to Rochester a rich man, displaying wealth and newfound social status. His life took a dramatic turn in 1865 when he was arrested in connection with the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, though he was quickly released due to lack of evidence. Tumblety's life was marked by constant movement and legal troubles, from Murrayland to St. Louis, and even arrested for pickpocketing in New Orleans. His disdain for women was well known, with Tumblety even boasting about macabre collections of uteruses from various women at a dinner party in Washington, D.C., The late 1880s in London, particularly the impoverished Whitechapel district, was a time of great social turmoil and fear. And amidst this backdrop, in 1888, Francis Tumblety found himself in the bustling, fog-shrouded city. It was a time and place that would soon be rocked by a series of ghastly crimes. The Jack the Ripper murders began in August 1888. The brutality and baffling nature of these crimes threw London into a state of panic. The killer's ability to evade capture led to widespread speculation and numerous theories about his identity. But why was Tumblety in London during this tumultuous time? Was it mere coincidence or was there a more sinister reason for his presence in the city? Tumblety, already a man of controversy, soon found himself amidst the whirlwind of suspicion as the police scrambled to find the Ripper. To understand the gravity of the situation, one must consider the conditions of Whitechapel. Overcrowding, poverty and crime were rampant. The Ripper's victims, mostly women of the night, became symbols of vulnerability and despair that plagued the area. As the terror of Jack the Ripper gripped London, the police were under immense pressure to find the killer. And in their frantic search, many individuals were scrutinised, including Francis Tumblety, but what made Tumblety a figure of suspicion in the eyes of the authorities? Tumblety's lifestyle and personality were unconventional to say the least. His flamboyant dress, his known disdain for women, particularly prostitutes, and his secretive nocturnal activities made him a person of interest. His medical background, especially his fascination with uteruses, which he displayed to guests, only added to suspicion. Crucially, Tumblety was in London at the time of the murders. His movements and associations in the city were closely scrutinised. Reports suggested 
He frequented areas the Ripper's victims were found, which further intensified the suspicion against him. The police, desperate for leads, found Tumblety's profile increasingly intriguing. His medical knowledge, coupled with his misogynistic views, seemed to align with theories about the Ripper's identity. However, concrete evidence linking Tumblety directly to the crimes was elusive. Amidst the growing hysteria surrounding the Ripper murders, Francis Tumblety became more than just a person of interest. In November 1888, he was arrested, but not for the murder. The charges were unrelated to the case, yet his arrest fueled public suspicion and media frenzy. While Tumblety faced the unrelated charges, the police continued to probe his potential connection to the Ripper murders, and his arrest brought him into the spotlight, with newspapers widely reporting on the mysterious American doctor with a questionable past. Tumblety's arrest and the subsequent media attention cast a shadow on his character. The public, already on edge due to the Ripper murders, were quick to draw connections, even in the absence of solid evidence linking him to the crimes. Tumblety would not remain in custody for long. After securing bail, he managed to flee to France, eventually returning to the United States. This escape only added to the mystery and speculation surrounding him. Was his return to America an admission of guilt or merely an act of self-preservation? In the aftermath of Tumblety's escape, opinions were divided. Some saw his actions as indicative of a guilty conscience, while others viewed it as a response to the unjust persecution. The lack of concrete evidence left the case open to interpretation and endless debate. After his dramatic departure from London, Francis Tumblety's life continued to be one of movement and controversy. Settling back into the United States, Tumblety attempted to resume his medical practice, but the shadow of the Ripper case followed him. Despite his efforts to rebuild his life, Tumblety could not escape the infamy that his arrest and subsequent escape had brought him. Newspapers occasionally mentioned him in connection with the Ripper murders, fueling ongoing speculation and intrigue. Tumblety died in 1903, but the mystery surrounding him did not perish with him. Over the years, his story has been revisited by historians and Ripperologists, with some arguing that he remains a credible suspect, while others dismiss him as a mere footnote in the saga. Modern forensic analysis and historical research have not conclusively linked Tumblety to the murders, yet his life story, filled with eccentricities and controversies, continues to captivate. The question remains, was Francis Tumblety an unlucky charlatan caught in a web of suspicion, or was there more to his story, hidden in the shadows of history? And the case of Jack the Ripper, with suspects like Francis Tumblety, remains a fascinating study in criminal history a blend of fact and speculation, a puzzle that continues to challenge and intrigue. The story of Francis Tumblety is rife with mystery and sensational tales, some of which clouded the truth about his life and alleged connections to the Jack the Ripper murders. Let's separate fact from fiction. One prevalent myth is that Tumblety's medical knowledge and his collection of uteruses directly linked him to the Ripper crimes. While Tumblety did possess a collection of anatomical specimens, there is no concrete evidence to prove that these were in any way connected to the murders. Another aspect, often sensationalised, is Tumblety's flamboyant and eccentric personality. While his demeanour and lifestyle were undoubtedly unconventional, they do not, in themselves, indicate criminality. It's crucial to differentiate between peculiar character traits and actual evidence of wrongdoing. Upon examining the factual evidence, it becomes evident that much of the case against Tumblety is circumstantial. His presence in London at the time of the murders and his known misogyny, while intriguing, do not conclusively tie him to the crimes. Modern forensic analysis and historical research have yet to uncover definitive proof of Tumblety's involvement in the Ripper murders. The blending of fact and fiction in his story serves as a reminder of the complexities in unravelling historical mysteries. In our exploration of Francis Tumblety's life and his alleged connection to the Jack the Ripper murders, we've transversed a landscape 
filled with mystery, speculation and intrigue. Tumblety, a figure both flamboyant and enigmatic, remains an object of fascination in this unsolved crime. While the evidence against Tumblety is largely circumstantial, comprising of his presence in London, his unusual medical interests and his disdain for women, it falls short of conclusive proof. The blending of myth and fact in his story only deepened the enigma. The Jack the Ripper case continues to captivate and perplex. Each suspect, including Tumblety, adds a unique dimension to this enduring mystery. The lack of definitive proof means that the identity of the Ripper, perhaps history's most notorious serial killer, remains a subject of debate. What do you think about Francis Tumblety's connection to the Ripper case? Is he a likely suspect, a scapegoat, or simply a curious character caught in the crosshairs of history? We invite you to share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. The mystery of Jack the Ripper continues, and perhaps in the vast expanse of history and speculation lies answers waiting to be discovered.